Welcome to Seeking God, where we consider the questions and stories regarding our faith. If you find this video to be valuable, please click the subscribe button and also pass it on to others. Thank you. Once upon a time, there was a quail king and a hunter. The hunter had perfected a way of catching quail where he would take his net out in the morning and he would find a covey on the ground and he would throw his net over the covey. And then he would bundle them up and put them in a bag and take them to sell. And he would also take some home to his wife to eat. The quail king saw what was happening and wanted to devise a way to save the quail. So he brought his uh, covey together and he said, here's what we will do. The next time that we are together like this and he throws a net over us, we will raise our heads up and elongate our necks and then we will all lift up and fly away with the net and drop it onto a thorn bush. They expanded their number and invited many, many other quail to come in. So the next morning as they were feeding and the hunter came, he threw his net over the quail, they raised their heads up and they lifted up and flew away with the net, taking it out of his hands and they dropped it in a thorn tree. The hunter went to the thorn tree and he proceeded to pick his net out of the thorn tree, trying not to tear it on the thorns. The next morning he went back and he did the same thing and lo and behold the quail did the same thing. They flew away with the net, they dropped it in the thorn tree and then the hunter took forever just to carefully remove his net from the thorn tree. He went home and his wife said, where are the quail? He said, I don't have any. And she accused him of having an, another wife. And he said, why do you say that? And she said, because you must be taking the quail that you catch to her. You've always brought home quail. And he said, oh no, the quail just seem to be getting too smart. Meanwhile, back among the quail, one of the young ones was walking along and he tripped. And there was one immediately behind him and accidentally stepped on his head. It didn't bring him any real harm, but it made the younger quail very, very angry. And he came up and began to argue and fight with the quail. The other one really didn't want an argument or a fight, but it escalated into that. And not long after that, others began to choose sides and to, to have conflict themselves. The next morning, the conflict was continuing and before the hunter could get there, the quail king said to his quail, come on, let's go, let's get away from here. This is not going to work. And as the others were bickering on the ground and they left, the hunter came and he just reached down and gathered up the quail and put them in a bag. There will always be conflict in our lives. There will always be something we do not like about someone, that we don't like how they act or how they treat us or how they treat someone else. Sometimes they won't be able to let something go that we've done and sometimes we will not be able to let something go that they have done. Conflict is a normal part of life. This story from Buddhism shows to us the, the effect of unresolved conflict and its effect on community 
and individuals. You see, they were not able to let go of the conflict. And the conflict between the two quail became more important than their relationship, more important than the other quail around them, and more important than their safety and security as a group. What happened was that because they were unwilling to address the conflict in their lives, their lives and the life of the community was destroyed. It's very similar for us as it is for the quail. If we persist in conflict for conflict's sake, if we're unwilling and unable to reach out to each other and to listen to each other, to hear the pain and the hurt and the anger from each other, and if we're only willing to focus on winning the conflict, then you and I place our own lives and the lives of those around us in jeopardy. Our lives of faith must at some level include seeking openness, hearing each other, and seeking forgiveness. Learning to resolve conflict, learning to be present with other people, learning to give and receive forgiveness. These are all parts of our journey of life. Life is a journey. Faith is a journey. Thank you for joining me in this journey, Seeking God.